male and female. I can appreciate a good looking guy and I can appreciate a good looking woman. And some of these folks that I have as students, they literally have nothing wrong with them physically. They look by all you know, standards, they are attractive. They're successful people. They're doing well in their careers and they're doing well in trading, but they're being plagued by not being balanced by having a significant other. And then because of that loneliness, they go into the marketplace and they push the button to do what? To feel good. They're allowing their personal life to manifest itself in trading. You cannot look for a feel good experience in trading. If you treat it like a massage parlor and looking for a happy ending, don't be surprised if you end up with an STD. It's, it's as simple as that. You can't do those types of things. These markets will literally take you out. They'll make you second guess everything, remove all sound logic, and you'll lose control. Like a drunken, promiscuous affair on a weekend that your spouse doesn't know about. You'll be in there doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. So why invite it? Why live your life like that? to allow manifestations of those types of things in your trading. Folks, this is your business. This isn't a game. This isn't a hobby. If it is, you're doing it fucking wrong. You're doing it wrong unless this is your business and you're minding your fucking business. You're going to fail because you are competing against yourself. And if you haven't removed all the toxic things in your life and found coping skills to allow yourself to be fruitful, balanced, productive, disciplined, do this, don't do that. If you can't do those things in your personal life, you sure as hell aren't going to do it in trading. Who's managing you? Who's your boss? Who's going to reprimand you for losing money? I am honest about where my limitations are. And I have no bones about saying this is where my weakness is. My weakness in my trading is always my exits. I'm never satisfied with them. Does that make me poor of a trader? No. It means I'm honest. It means that I do have weaknesses. I just don't know how to make them better than they are. And when you have frailties... You have to embrace them. Don't try to hide from them. Because the fact that you're trying to hide from them is the same thing that causes everyone to have drawdown, blown accounts, because you're trying to do what? You're trying to avoid that losing trade. That one singular event where it's now taking something from you. You're trying to avoid that. And the fact that you're trying to avoid that singular transaction turns into a series and chain of them, then your account's blown because you've ramped up your emotional and psychological impact. You've done that to yourself. That singular trade that was a losing trade, you made it now more significant. That trade cheated on you. That trade went outside of the relationships and the boundaries you set for it. And now you feel betrayed. So what do you wanna do? You want revenge. You wanna go find that motherfucker that cheated on you and you go out there and you go into the marketplace looking for them and you don't find them you find somebody else and they take again from you and they take again and again and again and you're hurt more each time and it revs up that emotional and psychological impact and you want it to go away you want to feel victory you want to feel like you've done the right thing because if you win you've done the right thing in your mind that's what you're going to tell yourself if you get the money back you've done the right thing and you didn't learn anything from that when you should have said um stop this hurt me i'm going to take a you know step back and heal i'm not going to be in a rush to get into a new relationship a new trade but it's not comfortable waiting around for Mr. Right or Miss Right. Hardships, you're gonna have issues where, you know, you're gonna feel like you you got it figured out. You'll have a week or two, maybe even a month where you just did everything right. And this is where you get in trouble, young men. (laughs) You think that you got it all figured out 
and then you have a losing trade. And it might not even be a significant loss. It might be something so small, half a percent or whatever. You save the stop from getting hit full on. Like you had a 1% risk or 2% risk and you saved it from getting knocked out, but still it's a loss. Now, you're not looking at the fact that you were able to mitigate the total 1% or 2% hit to your account because you protected the stop loss. You saw it was going to turn on you. You closed it before it went to your stop. That's commendable. That's a skill set, not to promote the idea of paranoia, but if you're beginning to trade with live funds, if you do that initially and you are aggressive about cutting your losses, that alone would probably keep you alive long enough to find a way to grind through the adversities. Because when you get a real good winning trade, it doesn't wait around. It just takes off. It just runs. But the problem with this business is you want to second guess yourself so much because you're trying to avoid losing. This is the number one characteristic of a losing trader. You're willing to hold on to a losing or questionable trade. Come hell or high water, you'll hold that. It isn't moving like you wanted it to, but damn it, you're not letting go of it. Because what happens if you close it and it runs in your favor? <laughs> what happens if you're fucking wrong and you just held on to it too long? That's what usually happens. See, if your trade is right, it's going to show you right away. Well, the perception of others about them. That's what they that's what they're trying to have new equity highs in that. And that's the that's the problem. When you go out and you start challenging people, especially people that's been doing it a long time, and you can't bring those results, that will rattle you, especially if you're a male. A male takes that personal. Again, it's like you're saying that they aren't that large downstairs. That's how they'll take it. That's that's what it feels like for a man in trading. If they are sizing up with someone else or someone else is calling them or tapping them on the shoulder, that feeling of I got to live up to that because what if everyone else thinks that I can't do this and we can't do that? And then what they do is they start doing things that they can't really do. And they are regretting it. My FX books announcing they're going to do funded challenges, all that kind of stuff. Don't do those things. If you don't do those things, I guarantee you, your results will be phenomenal because you're placing no image in the results. You have no expectations held of yourself. You're not saying I have to hit 20%. I got to do 10% a week. I got to do 100% in a month and a half or two months. All those types of goals are stupid. If you haven't been trading for at least three years and you're trying to do some stuff like that, you're, you're really making it more difficult than it needs to be. Versus what happens if you just try to make 2% a week? Would you be happy if you had a funded account with, I don't know, $100,000 and you tripled it over the course of a year? I mean, how many of you would be like, you know, fuck you, I don't want $200,000. Are you crazy? $200,000? What the hell would I want to have $200,000 for? That's insulting, ICT. Why would you even ask me that? That's what some of you are basically saying without saying those words. Because you want to double your account every month. What would $200,000 a year do for someone like yourself? Would it change your comfort? Would it make things a little bit easier? How about get yourself out of debt? Well, you don't have to work very hard to get that kind of result. It's very small little micro moves that you have to do. But when you make them for the week, you have to stop. Don't place any more Olympic feats on top of you. Don't try to live up to everyone's expectations of, hey, you know, you're an ICT student. You should be out there killing it like ICT style. No. No. One good trade a week. Do it and be done. It's about making money. It's about making money, folks. Okay. It doesn't matter how many little hearts you get behind your Twitter posts or how many fanfare you get from all these other. I don't even know how Instagram works. 
<laughs> whatever that stuff is that would fluff a person up those things don't matter making fucking money does paying your bills does being able to eat taking care of your family paying your mortgage off how about getting a house without a mortgage paying your car note off so that way you don't have to make any payments new set of duds clothes doing something for someone that wouldn't expect it those types of things that that right there that is a real motivator coping skills going through the processes that I've taught in great detail on my YouTube channel but the problem is you're one of those individuals that want ICT to get right to the point the point is you don't listen that's the point the point is you don't fucking listen you're not trying to take good advice and you just want to do it your way you want Burger King fucking mentorship okay have it your way well have it your way mentorships don't make millionaires that's the way that works okay it creates emotionally charged traders that hold on to losing trades too long and then when they fail and blow up in your face that creates that loser cycle where you want to try to try to get it back right away you know what that means you're going to lose more fucking money and it just keeps repeating and repeating and then finally you blow your account and then what happens you beat yourself up because you're going to look at the trades and say why the hell did i even do that there was nothing in the market why did i buy that there was no fair value gap there was no order block it didn't even take sell side liquidity what the fuck was i doing you're chasing emotional charges that you put behind that decision you completely abandon all reasoning and why you even are trading you're not the only one that's done that everybody does that everybody does it why why is it so hard because you're competing with yourself you have to live with yourself you have to wake up in your own skin tomorrow and the day after and the decisions that you make today and yesterday and what you'll make tomorrow come with consequences. And see, you want consequences to be sugar-coated, almost orgasmic in trading. You want them to be happy endings. Not to sound crude, but that's what you really want. You want a chance meeting with a stranger and a knock on your bedpost. That's what you want. You want every night to be a one night stand and it's all good, feel good moments. I'm sorry. Sometimes you're going to wake up next to a hand grenade and that's just the way it is. And you are going to hurt yourself. But you got to say, look, you know what? I got pip drunk. I made some poor decisions. Thankfully, I'm not married to this person. <laughs> and just slip out before they wake up. And just live on, you know, continue to trade and try not to do that same thing again. And this goes for both the ladies and the men. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Somebody just whispered, I just did that last weekend. How's he know? I'm watching. I got my eyes on you. But the reason why it's so, it's so difficult trading is because you're competing against a fucking savage in the making. You. You are such a formidable adversary that you alone are the one that's holding yourself back. Nobody else is holding you back. These yahoos on the internet that say what you're trying to learn doesn't work. And all that, that didn't stop you. People commenting saying, oh, well, you know, you're doing this and you're doing that. This is the real way of doing it. That doesn't motivate you to go chase that stuff. You're sticking to this. But you, you're the adversary. If you take the energy that you place in worrying about stupid shit and people that don't matter and you apply it to yourself and how you can build yourself up so that way you could be useful to yourself and your friends and family that are worth being around yes i said that because there are family members that you shouldn't have in your in your small circle and when i cut those out of my life too man happiness happiness because I'm going to tell you something. When you start making lots of money, your fucking family does not like that. They don't like that. They're going to look at you and say, you know what? This motherfucker here. You know, I never noticed this bitch has an ego problem. Look at him. He's buying these cars. Now, I, I didn't drive my car over to their house. 
I didn't say this is how much I pay for my car. They just found out I bought these cars. This motherfucker, look at him. What's stopping you? You have it now. It's done. It's on those videos. Study it. You got to work for it. It doesn't mean I watch the videos, therefore I should know. No, you watch the videos and I tell you what you should be looking for. Then you have to do the work. You have to do that. If you fail, I did not fail you. You failed you. Own it, man. Own it.